long and and I don't want to describe it all, but I'll deal with that when we get do there. Do you want Do you want to start with that one? Ah, uh, no. Well, mm, yeah, sure. Oh. Uh, I'll do it, but not me first. You know, you go first, and then I'll do it. You, you me, know, me first. Me I'll first, go, or you first? I'll go, you go first. I'll go second, but without battle first. Okay. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, one more time. You go first. I go second. No, you go first. I go first. Okay. Well, thank you. I get well with that terrible introduction. Welcome you guys um, to the week. Is it eight or nine? It's week, week eight. eight. Week, week eight. eight. The week. You didn't tell me we were starting. <laughs> I told you we were going live. The, Whatever. I uh, well, see. This is the thing. Every time I click out of the window, like it stops the game. The game music. And that is not what I wanted at all. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, I, th everything is going wrong, Matt. Everything is going wrong. But welcome, you guys. <laughs> this is Sun Brother 2 coming at you live with your boy Squid. What's up, guys? You two boys, Squid. <laughs> coming at you live. <laughs> no, I'm joking. We are we joined by Matt, guys. So. Hey, everybody. Matt here. Yeah. Uh, coach of the Winnipeg Jellicent, coach of the Salt Lake City Swamperts, are here to bring you guys yet another uh, weekly recap for LDL, our Lonely Draft League. If you guys don't know what the LDL is or what TLTPG is, uh, let me go ahead and quickly explain that to you. TLTPG is a, an online Facebook uh, group dedicated to just bettering ourselves as Pokemon trainers. We have very different formats we have tournaments we have vgc stuff we have gym leaders we have an elite four and the ldl is our draft league format basically we just we're kind of like you know like the gba the p4g and stuff and we just but we just do it amongst friends and stuff some of us have youtube channels that post it some of us don't so you kind of see just different stuff all around but uh for week eight a lot of fun battles happened right matt Oh yeah, lots of fun battles. Lots of short battles, but lots of fun battles. L lots of short battles, but lots of fun b battles. Um, do you want... Oh yeah, I'm starting. That's right. I am starting, so I guess... Uh, well, start with ours? Yeah, I guess we can start with ours. Yeah, L sorry you guys, I am terrible. I can get over the pain of it. The pain, yeah. So while that's while I'm going to be telling you, I'm actually going to be playing this game off on the side just to provide some awesome like content uh, for you guys. So, it's just a fire red randomizer, so it's it's whatever, it's whatever. But, uh, so Matt and I actually faced this week, and it was actually, um... Not my best battle. <laughs> it was it was definitely not Matt's best battle, unfortunately, but it was a fun battle, and it was a battle that I have been dreading. If you guys don't know, I as the coach as the, as the Salt Lake City Swamperts, um, uh, my record has not been the best, and so I've been on an uphill climb... To clinch a playoff spot, even if it's by the skin of my teeth. But we'll get into that later on. Uh, for me, I decided to bring my Fortress, my Mega Alakazam, my Weavile, my Thunderous Therian form, my Entei, and my Nidoqueen. While Matt, you decided to bring Mega Sableye, Terrakion, Cryogonal, Blastoise, Victini, and Thunderous Incarnate form. So, first thing that was really interesting was the fact that you did bring Cryogonal. I was I, tempted to not bring it. I, I thought it had answers to a lot of your team, to be honest. Mm -hmm. uh, I was quite shocked, honestly. I was like, that's the one Pokemon he won't bring. I've well, outspeeds Thunderous, like non scarfed. Outspeeds Nidoqueen, non scarfed. Does, and it, it deals really with those fast? Pokemon. It's just, it's weak special attacking still. Mm -hmm. I think 95. Alright, so, uh, so. So yeah, th those are the teams that we brought. Uh, I lead Fortress while Matt leads with his Sableye. Uh, because I know uh, that Matt's going to... Well, for our league, we instantly have to Mega Evolve no matter what. And so, um, because of that, uh, I knew it wasn't the right time to get up Rocks because of Magic Bounce. I didn't want Rocks on my side of the field. So I've already I... Magic Bounced Rocks twice this season. Exactly. <laughs> People forget about Magic Bounce, and I'm not one of those guys, unfortunately. Uh, so I, I go really ahead, hoping. and I instantly swap out into Weavile knowing I knew that the Will-O-Wisp was coming. I knew the Will-O-Wisp was coming, but because you of You wanted the... to burn that lump? I didn't want to burn it that early in the game, but I knew it was my safest switch as far as any of the mons that I could potentially want to bring in. I didn't want to burn the Nidoqueen just because, you know, she was a late game Dependent. sweep. I yeah. didn't want to burn Alakazam for sure because he's frail. Well, like, Magic Guard, like, you wouldn't have taken the burn damage until you Mega. 
Yeah, I guess, but I mean, it just it wasn't it, on the Sable Eye. It wasn't a good switch. On the Sable Eye, it wasn't a good switch, but it was it was the safest switch for me. I can say. Um, yeah. Well, that's why I went for Will of Us. You know, it was like. What wants to take a will of us on your team aside from Entei? Nothing. And I didn't want to risk the Entei coming in because Entei couldn't have really done anything to you. So Yeah, uh, I, th I actually think I was running max special defense this week. Oh, really? Okay. So yeah. uh, so I instantly swap out for my Weavile. The will of us comes out. I burn my Lumberry. Uh, but because of that next turn, I know that's because the Will-O-Wisp is coming. I'm just going to go ahead and even up my stats. And I, the reason why I brought Lum this week was because I'm actually a Sword Stance variant Weavile, which is super scary. So Will-O-Wisp comes off. I uh, get uh, my Sword Stance off. I'm basically at even stats. The next turn, uh, Matt actually goes ahead and swaps out uh, for his Thunderous. Oh my god. Hold on. I'm looking at these starters here. Uh, and so because of that, because Matt decides to swap out, uh, knowing that his Weavile was kind of set up fodder at that point, uh, he swaps into the Terrakion. The I get Sableye, it. yeah. Oh, yeah, the Sableye, my bad. He uh, swa swaps into the Terrakion. I'm at now plus two, even though I'm technically at plus four, but I'm burned, so whatever. Um, and so knowing that it, I was praying that it, you weren't Scarfed, number one. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I prayed and... Ooh. Okay. You went for Icicle Crash, right? Uh, yeah, I went for I, I went for the Icicle Crash, brain for the flinch. I didn't get the flinch, but I did a lot of damage. I do I think doing upwards of seventy five percent damage. I to was your low yellow. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and but it didn't flinch. But you land your rock slide, and Weavile gets knocked out. Weavile gets knocked out really early Going in back. my games. I've noticed. Um, okay, Matt. First, quick question: Gengar, uh, Illumise, or uh, Dunsparce? Uh, Dunsparce. Okay. I have this stream open on like the other tab here. I'm like, a little <laughs> bit behind. So, uh, so after that, my Thunderous comes in. Uh, Matt automatically swaps out for his Mega Sableye, and I just wanted to get damage. I knew I outsped the Trackion. I ate it. I knew I could outspeed the Trackion. I just wanted damage. Um, and unfortunately, I get uh, for Matt. I get the paralysis after that uh, thunderbolt uh, major balls yeah and so because of that the next turn uh, I go for the thunderbolt just praying for the paralysis I just gotta weaken down this mega sableye uh, he doesn't get paired that turn he goes for the recover uh, yeah, but that was that, my only play exactly and it was just for me I just I just had to wait until um, until the para para. Did happened and that happened honestly the next turn which was really lucky because I was able to preserve a lot of Thunderbolts and stuff. But after uh, the Mega Sable, I got th uh, para uh, paralyzed. I uh, knocked it out the next turn with a Thunderbolt. And from there, your Thunderous so actually came in. Which and at this point, this was when I realized that you were Scarf Thunderous. Mm -hmm. And the thing that's... Uh, wait, was I Scarfed? You had to be. You outsped, like... True. Thunderous. Oh, that's right. I'm I was double sure. Scarfed. Um... But the, the, the thing that was really scary for me uh, was your Thunderous, just because it definitely just outsped my Thunderous. Yeah, you could have gone for uh, Thunder... Yeah, you can't hit, hit me with your Electric-type moves, but um, for that, you know, you could still click Hidden Power Ice and stuff, I so... I brought the knockoff this week, to be it, honest. Exactly, so... I really should have. Uh, I go ahead and I swap out back into Fortress as you go ahead and set up an agility. I'm like, well, that's it. That's that's game, honestly. That's game for me. Uh, but from there, you actually up. go for I'm the up. misclick. Yeah, you go for I the went to click on a Hidden Power Fire, which kind of screwed me over for the entire game because it basically let me get up rocks for free. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you misclick. You hit Sludge Wave in instead. I get up my rocks. You go for the Hidden Power Fire. It gets me down to Sturdy, down of to course. Sturdy. Uh, but I go ahead and go for the Gyro Ball, and because I'm I'm running a negative speed to zero IV uh, fortress, which is usually how you should run your fortress. I'm I did, running Gyro Ball, yeah. Yeah, I did like upwards of forty percent to you. Was it that much? No, it it had to be like thirty percent. It was, it was, it was a lot. It was a lot of damage. I'm not gonna lie. I, it was a lot of damage. But uh, but that next turn. Uh, you actually go ahead and swap out your Thunderous for Blastoise as I yeah, go... Yeah, I wanted to get rid of those rocks yeah, I, as quick as I could. I can't remember the hidden power I had on my Fortress. I th it was a special hidden power to take on some of your mods. I just can't remember what. Grass or electric? 
Probably. I can't. I can't remember. Um, Probably grass to deal with Terrakion as well. Something. I can't remember, honestly, unfortunately. Uh, but the Blastoise comes in. You go for the rapid spin. I just go ahead and put up my rocks again. Uh, yeah. And uh, I, I would have imagined that that would have what continued to happen. Uh, yeah, except the, I overpredicted. Yeah, I, I went for the Gyro Ball next turn just to get a little bit more damage off of you. Uh, but you actually just go ahead and Dragon Tail me out right into my Nidoqueen. Queen. If that turn, if I had gone for the rapid spin, I would have outsped and scalded, and no more rocks. But I messed up. Unfortunately for you, it sucks to be you. Uh, so my Nidal Queen comes in. You have leftovers. You had leftovers. Right? I had leftovers on Thunderous. Yeah. So I was slowly. I hate Getting you, Matt. There are wild Dunsparce in the in the field here. <laughs> so um. Which one was Dunsparce? Was it uh? Charmander. Bulbasaur or okay. So, uh, the thing that, uh, sucked now was, uh, with my Nidoqueen, Queen, it's like, I could have easily clicked Thunderbolt. I'm scarfed, I definitely outspeed, but, uh, just knowing how things have played in the past with, uh, Blastoise, I, I feared the Miracle. Hmm, I and think I was running a physically defensive set this week, which... Is why I didn't run Mirror Coat. So it was because of that that you know I, I, I really did honestly risk that turn and I did go for the Thunderbolt. I do a huge amount of damage. Uh, to I should have rapid spin that turn too. Mm -hmm. uh, but you That's instead. So many bad plays. But you so many instead uh, go for the Scald and we just both do a crazy amount of damage to each other, kind of around the same area of damage. Uh, but, but you know, it's bad. Yeah, but. Uh, Next turn, you actually go ahead and swap out your Blastoise as you send in the Coragonal. It takes 25% to the rocks. I go for the Thunderbolt. And was that an Assault Vest? No, it's just really especially bulky. Wow, okay. So, I'm... What did it take, like half? I think. Yeah, no, it's it's got as much base special defense as it does yeah, special Yeah, it was right, it was, down, it was down to 50%, yeah, uh, after the rocks. Uh, so it only took 25% damage there. Oh, no, I, it's base 135 special defense. Okay, I want you to know right now I'm running into nothing but Dunsparce. I don't think I run into anything but Dunsparce. Get wrecked. What is its name? Why? Huh. Uh, so, because of that, though, uh, because the Kragonal, uh kind of just like I didn't I wanted to keep Nidoqueen Queen in the back I realized that I could just easily send in Entei and E-Speed to guarantee knockout and so after that so I, I send in my fortress and I let my fortress just go sack down it, yeah, yeah I, I basically yeah. sacked it uh so next I think I was rocking the power gym mm -hmm. uh, just in case yeah so I go ahead and I um I send in Entei and this is where unfortunately it went downhill for you right well, yeah, I had to get rocks gone, but Blastoise was too low, mm -hmm. and rocks destroyed my team. Yeah, so uh, I go for the I go for the E speed, but uh, you actually swap for Blastoise, and the E speed damage because I'm really abandoned not have done. Adamant Entei. I'm abandoned Adamant Entei. That's the only way you can run the uh, the, the E speed. The, the E speed. Well, so, you can run other items, but yeah. Yeah. But you're running speed, you're you, you, running you better run a bandit because that's, yeah. that's where the power came from. So because of or that, life Blastoise was able to take enough damage where I could just follow up and knock it out with the E-Speed the next turn. And then from yeah. there, your Terrakion comes in. And after taking rocks damage, you and I talked about this. Rocks it, mattered so much. Rocks mattered so much. It knocked, uh, it knocked your, um, it knocked your Terrakion <laughs> into the red. And my banded yeah. E-Speed was able to knock it out next turn as well. So that's two kills yeah, for Entei. If I hadn't swapped in Blastoise there, I could have just sat Cryogonal Rapid Spin and been in a way better position. Mm -hmm. But I think I still <laughs> lost to Scarf Thunderous at the end, mm -hmm. like which is why I, like, I wasn't like I, I knew at that point like it was uh, I was in a bad bad spot. So. There are wild Tyranitar here. Holy cow! Well, I guess that's guess what you're catching. Well, I gotta pray I, I run into it. I'm gonna go train against Sunsparce for a second. Um, so, after that, uh, Thunderous comes in, takes 25% to rocks. E Speed does at, at least 50% to you, unfortunately. So, I knock out I was, your Thunderous. I was under half, wasn't I? I was in the you yellow. Were, you were under half, yeah, but my min damage, I think, was like 48, 49%. Yeah, it, it, I expected it to kill, like. And so, At that point, I knew you were banded too. After I saw the damage to Blastoise, like max defense, mm -hmm. like no, there's no way. And so after that, your your ace in the hole, Victini, finally decides to show up. 
Except uh, I wasn't running perfect team either. Also, like, the damage. The yeah. Damage so, uh, Victini comes in, takes 25% to rocks. I go for the E speed, of course. I It's a two shot for me, so it's like all I have to do is not die. Is not die. And you go for the uh, freaking Inferno Overdrive. Move. You go for the. My strongest move. And you only did, like, half health to me. It did half, resisted, because it was like. Because ZV Entei create, is a basically. beast, my dude! Well, okay, you think about it. ZV create, like, would have O-code if it wasn't resisted. Probably. <laughs> that's but, how ridiculous Victini is. And that's like what I love. 200 move. That's why I love Victini so much. But, once again, because I live the attack and Bandit Entei is still outspeeding everything with E-Speed, I knock yeah, out the Victini. That was, it. That was and, game and over. And that was game over. Cragonal comes in, I knock it out with E-Speed. So yeah. I picked up the 5-0 victory. Hey, nope. you don't have my kills on here. Whoever updated the sheet, you're fired. <laughs> okay, we're good. Oh, I'm gonna go. Yeah, so uh, now, Matt, let's go ahead and move on to one of the battles that you covered. Uh, All right, uh, we're gonna go to Marco and Jesse's battle this week. Okay. So uh, Marco, the head coach of the Venice Vespican, brought Araconid, Needle King, Zapdos, Mega Scizor, Shuckle, Tapu Fini, and Jesse brought in Dust Noir, Azumarill, Tornadus Therian, Kamala, Heatran, and Kurum Black, which is newly on his team due to a recent trade with uh, Arthur. Yep. Um, so, let me grab my notes here. So, he leads Araquanid, Dust Noir. The first goes off, he sees he has the choice band. Um, goes for the Will O Wisp, not <laughs> remembering that Water Bubble makes you actually immune to burn, which yep. fails. Dustmar takes like 85% from a banded liquidation, which is absolutely ridiculous. Um, at that point, he switches out. Um, I forget. He switched out into. I want to say a zoom reel to take it. A um, bit more switching around. Heatran uh, got a sub up against Araquanid switching in, which was a good play. Um, went for the Magma Storm. Missed. It was, uh, it was, he missed two Magma Storms this week, uh, which was heartbreaking, but, uh, so he had to sack Dusclops at that point, didn't want to lose Heatran right away. Um, Tornadus Therian comes in against Araquanid. The flying move, you know, it's coming, so Marco goes into Zapdos to take it. Air Slash is resisted, um, but Tornadus outspeeds, U turns, gets some chip damage, gets that regenerator, Kirin Black. Comes in, takes a thunderbolt, and gets paralyzed. Oh, which is, which is disappointing. Um, I believe he got full parried the next turn, or no, a couple turns later, he got a fusion bolt out onto Shuckle, doing like 20%. And Shuckle gets the rocks up, which pretty much was the key to Marco uh, whittling down um, Jesse's team. Uh, at one point, uh, Mega Scizor is in against uh, Kirin Black, uh, and I don't understand uh, what who what everyone's thought process was here, but uh, Marco switches into Tapu Fini, uh -huh. and Jesse goes for Fusion Bolt, and it just Okos <laughs> like, on the spot. <laughs> Holy hell! I was like, <laughs> I want to know if that was a uh, a read. I don't, yeah, well, I think that was his go-to move against Mega Scizor anyway, because he resists both stabs. Oh, true, true, but, true. But, yeah, like, why, if if that's the case, like, he's seen him go Fusion Bolt, I wonder why he switched into Tapu Fini. Anyway, Mega Scizor comes in, um, he trans to switch in for Mega Scizor. Um, I think, yeah, this time, oh, no, this was when he got the sub against Araquanid. Um, but the Misty Terrain is still up, and he goes for Toxic. Guys, you gotta remember Tapu so, Finny's so Misty two, Terrain. Two times, uh, Jesse tried to status Araquanid and it failed for different reasons, which is uh, just unfortunate. Um, Azumarill comes in, still takes a buttload from Liquidation. Misty Terrain ends, Azumarill toxics Araquanid, so it's getting whittled down. But at this point, uh, a lot of Jesse's team has been whittled down. Um, Mega Scizor comes in against Kurum. Oh no, Mega Scizor comes in against Azumarill. I think he, uh... There's a bit more switching. Eventually, Araquanid kills Azumarill. 
Um, Kieran Black comes in, goes into Mega Scizor. Um, there was a bit of... Uh, this was when a full para happened as well, I think. And, uh... Oh yeah, Mega Scizor crits Kieran with the U-turn from about 40%, I want to say 45 which I think that mattered because uh, Jesse was running like near max health uh, here in black. It had like 240 something max HP. Uh, at this point, Kamala comes in, um, starts setting up stockpiles. Araquanid still does a boatload with banded liquidation. Um, the Pokemon is too he's, strong. He stockpile up to plus three. Liquidation gets the defense drop back to plus two. Um, and still does like 35, 40%, which is ridiculous. Holy um, cow. He switches into Mega Scizor. Um, Kamal gets a Swords Dance up. Earthquakes doesn't do very much. Um, Scizor gets the Earth or the uh, Swords Dance up. Um, proceeds to kill it with U turn a couple turns later. Um, and at that point, it's just Heatran and, and Tornadus left, and uh, a. Couple switches later, Zapdos kills them both. With uh, I think he had to switch into he tried to, he switched in on a Thunderbolt. Another Thunderbolt finished him off, and then uh, Tornadus couldn't do much to Zapdos and got killed by Thunderbolt as well. So Marco picks up the 5-0 here. Um, the rocks mattered huge. A couple Magma Storm misses mattered huge for uh, for Jesse, and, but just those couple. Uh, Forgotten uh, little infos. I don't show, I don't know if you forgot or misclicked or something, but um, can't will whisper Aquanid and you can't toxic under misty terrain. So uh, good good prep on both your parts. Uh, good job, uh, Marco, making the reads. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll see how uh, playoffs shape oh, up because shit. both these guys are uh, in the runnings. Yeah. Uh, so next up. It's going to be uh, Steven Prez versus Mark. Uh, Steven, of course, is the coach of the Arkentucky Archeops. Well, Mark is a uh, coach of the Arizona Sun Flores, if I'm not mistaken. No, not uh, the Arizona Focal Runners. There we go. So this week, uh, Steven decided to bring the Dragonite, his Clefairy, his land, his Lander Asterian form, his Mega Blastoise, his Zerkatree, and his Snorlax, while uh, Mark decides to bring his Cresselia, the Toxapex, the Clefable, the Alolan Ninetales, the Tangrowth, and the Donphan. Can you scream? Can you scream, Bulk? Bulk. Oh my god, I hate this team so much. Uh, so anyway, it starts off with Dragonite versus Cresselia, and Dragonite, uh, Steven automatically swaps out his Dragonite to send in the Snorlax while, uh, Snorlax, uh, while Cresselia actually goes for the Calm Mind. Cresselia then swaps out into Tangrowth as Snorlax goes for the Belly Drum, activates its, Iap its Iapa Berry, and gets back oh. to full health. So, only a couple turns in, That's, and we... Uh, gluttony Snorlax, right? Gluttony Snorlax to allow it to uh, eat the berry eat at 50%. Under half, yep. yep. Uh, and so, we have a plus six Snorlax, and it's only like turn three. <sighs> uh, Tangrowth uh, swaps out to Clefable, and so Snorlax just goes ahead and... Um... Uh, sorry, Heritages. Uh, and goes for the Recycle to get that berry back. That is nuts, by the way. That is nuts. That is that's a that's a too strong Pokemon. Uh, and so from there, Clefable goes for the Moonblast. It does about 15% as the Snorlax goes for the Toxic against the Clefable. Actually, lands it surprisingly. Um, hold on. I'm just kind of come up with these names on the spot. And so, uh, so now that the Clefable's paralyzed, uh, the next turn, the Moonblast goes off once again, uh, does another about 15% or so, uh, but this time, ooh, I gotta, I gotta heal, I gotta heal, I gotta heal. But this time, uh, Prez actually goes for the Frustration, but surprisingly, Clefable kinda ate it up. I don't know what went wrong there, if it was like- Unaware, right? Oh, it was unaware, that's, oh my Probably. god, that's what it was, that's what it was. Thank you. Uh, so it does, uh... 
It does, you know, a decent amount of damage. I want to say underneath 45% damage. Uh, it's still in the green, but the decent damage for yeah, Snorlax. Yeah, but the de but the um, the toxic damage is racking up. The next turn, uh, risking the biscuit, Mark goes for the wish on his Clefable, as uh, it eat as it tanks another hit of uh, of frustration and poison damage from the Snorlax, barely living in the red. I mean, like barely living. In the red. Uh, let's see. So then, the next turn, uh, let's see. Yeah, the next turn, uh, just, uh, the Clefable goes for the Protect, gets some more health back, but once again, Toxic Damage just racks up too fast too quickly, and so because of that, uh, Prez was just able to hit it with a couple more Frustrations, taking a little bit more damage from the Clefable a couple turns later, but eventually ends up knocking it out. So, already a huge bulky wall on the threat, uh, on the field is gone, as well as, um, Prez has, still has a plus six Norlax on the field. So from there, Tangrowth comes in and knocks off the I Iapa Berry as Frustration just turns around and knocks out the Tangrowth. And unfortunately, this is where Prez did kind of misplay. Unfortunately for him, he did not realize that even uh, that his berry was that because his berry was knocked off, he can't recycle it. He just thought that he could recycle it back onto him regardless if it was knocked off or not. So that unfortunately allowed him uh, to. Uh, take a great amount of damage on the special side from the Alolan Ninetales that came in the turn after, thinking uh, because he's thick fat, you know, he could really live any hit, and he'll just finish it off the next turn. Uh, he'll go for the recycle. Uh, Prez, uh, like I said, he misplays with that uh, recycle. Are you fucking serious? Um, and from there, the uh, Alolan Ninetales just goes ahead and knocks out the Snorlax. The next turn with uh, Hidden Power Fighting. I, I, it has to be Hidden Power Fighting because it was super effective. Uh, but from there, let's see. Dragonite comes in the next turn. Uh, Ninetales immediately swaps out into Donphan as the Dragonite goes for the Iron Head, which does a good 30% to the Donphan. But now this Hail Damage has broken that multi-scale on Ooh. that Dragonite. Uh, fearing the Ice Shard, Prez goes ahead and immediately swaps out... Uh, into his Clefairy, it seems. Yes, uh, but that same turn as he swaps in for the Clefairy, uh, Mark goes ahead is able to go ahead and get his rocks up as Ooh. well. So the next turn, uh, the Clefairy is in. Uh, Donphan swaps out for Toxapex as Clefairy goes ahead and gets up rocks for Steven. So the next turn comes off and Clefairy goes for the knockoff to get rid of the Black Sludge that is on the Toxapex, while the Toxapex goes for the plus one stockpile, or for the, yeah, for the stockpile. Uh, Clefairy after that swaps out for Zerkatry. Zerkatry um, gets another stockpile up. Toxapex does. I'm sorry. Right? Yeah, the, 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 pfft. yeah. Yeah, Toxapex. You got, it. You got it. Shut up. Uh, so from there, uh, even after getting those plus two stockpiles, I don't know why Mark did this. I think this might have been a misplay on his part, but uh, Mark actually goes ahead and swaps out his Toxapex the next turn. Please tell me I can make it. Uh, Toxapex swaps out into the Dawnfan as Prez tries to pull a fast one on... Uh, on Mark and goes for the Volt Switch. So unfortunately, uh, Zerkatry was stuck there for that turn. Uh, but of course, you know, Prez just swaps out Zerkatry the next turn, sends back in, uh, let's see, go actually goes into the Blastoise as the Donphan goes for the Earthquake, but unfortunately, uh, the Earthquake critted the Blastoise and knocked it all the way down into the red. You do not mess with Donphan, number one. You really don't. Uh, so after that, Press's Mega, but not even before it's Mega Evolved, uh, is already in the red. But uh, Don Fan goes ahead and switches out and goes straight into that, uh, where is it, Cresselia. As uh, that same turn, Prez goes ahead and uh, Mega Evolves, gets off a Water Pulse, and is able to bring the Cresselia, I want to say, down to 50%, uh, if I recall correctly. The next turn... Uh, Crest sets up a Call Mine while Prez just to continue to attack with the Water Pulse. I'm willing to bet he was trying to get the, uh, 
he, he wanted confusion. the confusion off or, or something, you know. Uh, but another call mine goes off that same turn. Cress is at plus two, plus two. Uh, oh, no, 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 my bad. That's a little bit further away. But uh, so the. Yeah, so after he gets the Cresselia down to 50%, uh, the next turn, my apologies, uh, the Cresselia goes for the uh, Moonlight, restoring it to full health as Prez goes ahead and just swaps out, uh, or rapid spins the rocks away. The next turn, uh, Landorus comes in. And after get, uh, being at plus one, the Cresselia goes ahead and fires off a Psychic, which does a, a decent amount of damage. I want to say it did a good 33% amount of damage. Uh, Prez then came prepared to handle this Cresselia as he then goes for the Swords Dance as the Cresselia goes for its second Calm Mind. So now we have a plus two attacking uh, Landorus versus the oh. plus two, plus two special side Cresselia. Uh, Prez is prepared here. Prez is absolutely pre prepared to take down this Cresselia as he then goes for the supersonic sky strike. But oh. that Cresselia. So bulky. So bulky. It lives, I swear. I want to say I'm like three health. It was very. It was a. It was. That HP part did not exist. Which is unfortunate. It sucked that that happened. Absolutely sucked. Goes for the Psychic against the uh, Landorus. Knocks Landorus down into the red. Uh, next turn, wanting to preserve his Landorus. Prez goes for the uh, goes for the swap uh, with U-turn for the kill on the Cresselia. And ends up sending right. in his Clefairy. As Mark, of course, sends back in Toxapex. So, Toxapex goes for the poison. Uh, Prez goes... Let's see... Yeah, uh, that same turn, Clefairy went for the Wish, uh, probably predicting a big attack coming off against it. Uh, but after that, Clefairy go went ahead and swapped out for the Zerka Tree, predicting that the Clefairy would swap out. Uh, Mark went for another Toxic and actually ended up poisoning the Zerka Tree as well. Zerka Tree, uh, however, at this point, uh, Prez did really good here as he brought a Scarfed Zerka Tree this week. Um... Which is actually really scary if you think about it. But he brought Energy Ball. And he locked himself into Energy Ball. Knowing that that Donphan was the immediate swap-in for the Zerka Tree. Because Donphan, of course, could handle any electric move that he throws at it. But the Energy Ball comes off. Lands on that uh, Donphan. Gets the knockout. Uh, gets the Beast Boost. Uh, the Beast Boost. The Beast Boost to a, spe to a special attacking... Uh, Zerka tree. So because uh, so because he scarfed, he outspeeds the Alolan Nine Tails, gets another knockout. Now he's plus two Zerka tree. And so finally, uh, the Toxapex comes in. It tries to fight back. It tries to uh, knock it down with the poison damage and any extra damage it can. But the energy balls are just too much. And Prez uh, picks up the ama amazing sweep at the end with the Zerka Tree with a 5-0 victory against Mark. Two five O's. Wow. Yeah. Good showing from uh, Steven. Yep, absolutely. So now, uh, who are we on to next there? I think we're going to go to Isaac and Drew's battle. All right. So, um, Drew is fighting hard to stay in the playoff race, and he uh, brought a solid team this week of Mega Beedrill, Aerodactyl, Suicune, Ampharos, Metagross, and Infernape. And Isaac brought his Tapu Koko, Latios, Excadrill, Tyranitar, Rotom Heat, and Miss Magis. Um, so, they both lead off with their, uh, fast, powerful pivots in Coco and Mega Beedrill. Um, I fully expected one of them to go for a U-turn or a Volt Switch. Neither of them did, actually. Um, Beedrill goes for the Poison Jab on Coco, um, showing that he is faster, which I believe Beedrill does a higher base speed, is that correct? Or Beedrill he, ha definitely has a higher base speed, 100%. Anyway, um, so Poison Jab goes off, but Coco, uh, Isaac was prepared, he has a Focus Sash. At this point, I'm like, alright, Thunderbolt, Electric Terrain, Beedrill's dead. He goes for Hidden Power Fire, which does like 55%, 60%, which I'm not sure if he was uh, predicting a switch into like something else, but 
Thunderbolt was was the move. Like Absolutely. the only it Pokemon on his team that wants to take a Thunderbolt is Ampharos. Even in electric terrain, it doesn't. Or even a Volt Switch. Like you're doing big damage. Thunderbolt was a roll to kill. We actually calc it out while I was watching the video. Uh, I don't know what was going on here. So wanting to preserve the Tapu Koko, um, Isaac switches into Latios, which I don't know if he just wanted to sack it or thought he could live a, a poison jab. But uh, Mega Beedrill goes for the U-turn smartly, gets the kill, gets out of there, um, goes into Aerodactyl. Um, Isaac brings in a Tyranitar, gets rocks up when Drew misses an Aqua Tail. Unfortunate. That sucks. Um, gets his own rocks up the next turn. Takes an Ice Beam from Tyranitar quite well, uh, thanks to the sand. I think it did like 45%. <laughs> the sand from Tyranitar hindering Tyranitar's damage. It was it was funny. Um, uh, they both go for offensive moves there. Aqua Tail does about 40%, 45% to Tyranitar. Goes for the Ice Beam back. Uh, um, let's see. Aerodactyl's probably in the red at this point. Um, this is when Drew reveals he had a plan all along. He has the Groundium Z uh, Continental Crush on uh, on Aerodactyl, and uh, wait, Continental it, Crush is Rock. A Rock, Rockium Z, yes, Rockium Z. Um, which I was surprised actually. Uh, it Tyrantar was at about fifty-five percent. And a Aqua Tail did less than half. Um, but this, I'm assuming it was Stone Edge. Uh, I'm assuming it was Stone Edge uh, Z move. Uh, just straight up got the KO on it. Uh, I don't know if it was a roll, but Tyranitar was down, which means that uh, Isaac's access to sand for extra drill was Gone. no longer there. <laughs> um, and so who comes in but extra drill? Um, to take advantage of that sand. Gets the Iron Head KO on Aerodactyl. Um, I think... So we had, at this point, Drew went into... I want to say Suicune? Um, which I was kind of confused. Or no, he went into Infernape. Right out, right off the bat. And okay, Infernape against, uh... Against, uh... Excudal is not a bad matchup. But... The sand is up. He's... Like, 90% Sand Rush, because they already saw the Life Orb damage. Absolutely. Um, Excadrill is going to outspeed. Infernape is not sashed. It just dies to Earthquake. I don't know what you're doing, Drew, but... Uh, you could have at least gone for a Mach Punch or something. Yeah, it just just dies. Right there. Um, at this point, Suicune comes in. Um, not wanting to take a Scald or anything, uh, Isaac switches out into Coco which dies to rocks. Um, I don't know if you had any removal, rapid spin on Excadrill or something, but uh, Coco died anyway, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, at this point, Sweekin gets a free Calm Mind, which is really bad. Uh, Excadrill comes in, does about 35-40% with Earthquake, uh, and dies to a Scald. Um, he, uh, at this point, I think Rotom comes in, Volt switches, does about 30% maybe with the plus one to Suicune. Goes into Miss Magis, Suicune rests at this point, which he was probably fine going for another Calm Mind as well, since he took that so well, but um, a couple turns later he wakes up. I Actually, I think he might have been Chesto. I was, uh, I believe it was very soon after uh, he, uh, he woke up. Uh, Miss Magis goes for the Twinkle Tackle. Um, it's interesting, I saw a few of the same sets was against me. I don't know if Isaac just thought it was, that some of the same Pokemon were appropriate. But uh, Twinkle Tackle to plus one special defense. Suicune does like 20% maybe. Oh god. Uh, the Dazzling Gleam Twinkle Tackle. And Scald just KOs like the next turn. Just because it says Z-Move doesn't mean it'll do damage. Yeah, it was... A valiant effort, but Miss Magis just couldn't do it. Uh, Rotom comes in, uh, Volt switches, and actually kills Suicune because he gets a crit with the Volt switch. Ah! <laughs> um, My which... Rotom died. <laughs> well, you spelled the name wrong anyway. Charlemagne has a G. I know. 
Um, I ratted it on my Nidoran. Uh, whatever. And there was enough spot karma. for the G. It's karma. Uh, <laughs> uh, so Rotom kills uh, Suicune, but at this point, Ampros and uh, Metagross are still alive. Um, and Mega Beedrill in the back, which never came back out. Um, but uh, Ampharos and Rotom trade hits for a bit, some overheats, lower the special attack, some volt switches, which don't do very much. Um, and then Metagross comes in. Interestingly enough, uh, Isaac went for the Will O Wisp on the turn that Metagross came in. Damn. But uh, Rotom was already at about 20%. Uh, just under 20% since it was in the red. And uh, it did the burn didn't matter. <laughs> and Metagross got the kill. and So uh, Drew won, 3-0. Trying to make his rise back to uh, to playoffs. Right, we're, we're both kind of in Can that. Can he do so. it? Can he do it? Who, <laughs> I don't know. We, I don't know. It's like we both are on, are on that climb up, which sucks. Yeah. Uh, all right. That was, a, that was some good uh, good plays by Drew. I uh, gotta give him props there. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me go ahead and I know I know the music stopped. I'm sorry, uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and stretch that out. Stretch. You've got uh, Arthur v Squid. I have Arthur v Squid. We the have Battle a, of Titans. The Battle of Titans, and I'm calling it the Battle of the Week this week, just because right. they are both previous LDL season champions. Squid, of course. And it was a good battle. And it was a fucking amazing battle. <laughs> nice. Keep in mind, you guys. Arthur, last season, got Celesteela banned because we allowed Celesteela because we didn't know anything about it. <laughs> this season, he has Magiarna, and we're banning that bitch too. Probably. We're we, probably. No, 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 we are. We are. There, there's it's, no... It's there are there's no if ands or buts about it. It may or may not have been voted on already, actually, but I cannot disclose no, 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 admin no, no, information. That that is that is that is that is CLTPG admins, LDL admins. I will fight this. You don't want it to get. You do want it to get banned. I want it to get banned. It's it's most likely going to be banned in the group, and most likely going to because of that also be banned in this league. Thank you. Because it's. It's too Defenses powerful. It is crazy. too powerful. Let us be honest. And soul heart. It's ridiculous. Okay, so uh, Randward, or I'm just going to call him Squid. Squid uh, brought a really cool team. He brought uh, Mammal Swine, Heracross, Golbat, which I found out later in his team prep video, if you guys want to go ahead and check that out, was a Scarfed Golbat of all things. It had one attacking move. <laughs> one attacking move. The Manaphy, the Arcanine, and the Gardevoir, while uh, Arthur decided to bring the Miltank, Crobat, Pukumuku, Latias, Magiarna, and Landorus Eye. Uh, Latias, of course, was that recent trade uh, with um, Marco? Jesse. Jesse. Jesse, the Kirin Black the that Kirin Jesse Black. used this week, and the Latias swap teams. Yep, so um, so there, there's both of their teams. Uh, Keep in mind as well, Landorus, I, Landorus Incarnate Form does not have Sheer Force. It can only run Sand Force, because screw Lando I, it would be banned otherwise. And I just lost this fucking lock. Oh my god, there's a... F oh my god, really? There's a Cubone on the screen, and all I have are Flying Type and Normal Type moves. Wait, <sighs> Cubone? Cubone. Yeah, but Flying Type doesn't... Right? I just I just pray that the sink gets like poison pointed from my freaking um Just growl it. I'm gonna leer it and then once and then go for a uh what's it called? Focus energy. Nope! Bone Club almost knocked me out. I'm gonna lose this lock. I'm gonna go into cotton. <laughs> okay, so uh, uh Mill Tank and Mammal Swine are their respective leads. Uh Mammal Swine first turn goes for the toxic. Uh, while Arthur goes ahead and gets his rocks up. Squid then uh, gets his rocks up as the mill tank goes for the body slam. Earthquake following from the mammal swine does a good amount of damage, knocking the mill tank down to about 40% health as the mill tank actually goes ahead and gets the heal bell off. Uh, mammal swine turns around and toxics once again, uh, while mill tank goes for the mill drink, bringing it up to a higher health. Uh, Mammal Swine goes for the Earthquake once again, bringing it down to right around the same uh, the same health that it was before as, uh, let's see. 
yeah, as the Miltank goes for the heal bell once again, which I think Arthur might have misplayed there. He should have really gone for the uh, stall and just uh, milk drinks. I know the toxic damage would have added up, but uh, from the health that the uh, mill tank was at earthquake next turn goes ahead and knocks out the mill tank as Arthur sends in the Puku Muku. Puku Muku does take a little bit of rocks damage of course. Mammal Swine automatically swaps out for that Golbat for Squid. Uh, takes a little bit of rocks damage himself as the Puku Muku goes for the Reflect. Uh, the next turn, because he is Scarfed in its Gold Bat, he usually is a little bit faster, even though he's, he's a fat bat. Goes for the Defog as the Puku Muku actually goes for the Baton Pass into Magiarna. Magiarna uh, goes for the Shift Gear as Squid swaps out into his Mammal Swine. And if you guys watch Squid's video, he, he Squid like legit thought that this was the end for him. He honestly did. Uh, but thinking fast, uh, Squid immediately swaps out into the Arcanine, gets the Intimidate drop off on the Mage, which isn't doesn't really matter. I just like to say it. Uh, as Mage Arna goes for the Shadow Ball, doing upwards of about 30% to his Arc to Squid's Arcanine. Uh, the next turn, though, Mage Arna goes for the Thunderbolt. Uh, Arcanine tanks it like a beast. Uh, goes for the Flare Blitz, gets the knockout on the Meiji Arna, and then dies to recoil damage. So, Ooh. the huge threat that is Meiji Arna is down and out, thanks to Arcanine. Uh, from there, uh, Heracross comes in, and then uh, Arthur responds with Latias. Latias automatically actually swaps out for Heracross, surprisingly, as uh, Heracross goes for the knockoff, ends up critting the Crobat, uh, but does take a little bit of recoil damage as he knocked off the Rocky Helmet off of the Crobat. So, uh, Arthur probably knew or expected it to be Scarf Heracross, mm -hmm. which is why he went into Crobat to take any sort of bug move which it actually wasn't move. which it actually wasn't uh, a scarf terror cross it was actually a sash terror cross i found out Ooh. oh my Wait. gosh no you die again yes shut up it's to Ill illumise i hate this thing um you got a flying type you kid yeah my flying type died to what the oh straight up tackle i wanted to bet i was like probably minus six or something Oh, you're minus six defense? Probably. Uh, there was a lot of growls and I was not paying attention because I'm reading this thing you here. Clear? Come on. Can I just knock you out, please? There you go. Uh, so from there, uh, that, that crowbot took a lot of damage. It took, it's down to like barely above 50% health, um, which is honestly crazy. Uh, and but, it lost its item. And it lost its item. So from there, Crobat actually goes ahead and U-turns out, uh, deals a little bit of chip damage onto that Heracross as Pukumuku comes up the next turn. As uh, the Pukumuku does take a little bit, uh, uh, does take uh, a decent sized, uh, a decently powerful earthquake from the Heracross. From there, Heracross swaps out for the Mamoswine once again as Pukumuku goes for the Reflect. Uh, so Arthur's just really wanting to focus on, you know, bulking his mons out as, as far as he can do. Uh, I mean, as much as he can do. Uh, so next turn, Squid actually goes ahead and gets up the rocks back up on uh, Arthur's side of the field as the Pukumuku goes for the recover and gets all the way back up to full health, which is really, really nice, especially because that, um, that Reflect is up helping boost its defenses, its physical defenses. Um, but from there... Uh, what happens is the, the Mammal Swine goes for the Toxic on the Pukumuku, lands it again. Squid like went for like three Toxics and, th tox yeah, went for three Toxics and landed all of them. Uh, Unlike Jesse, who landed one of two because one failed. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so after that, the, uh, the Toxic lands on the Pukumuku. Arthur goes and actually Baton passes out into the Landorus. Definitely a good call, knowing that oop, knowing that it can actually just live tank any ice shard that Mammal Swine wants to throw at it, which is exactly what happens the next turn. The ice shard goes off, uh, does a crazy amount of damage to the Landorus still. Um, with it, t uh, I think it being brought down to like maybe 25% health or so. I mean, it did a lot of damage for behind the reflect. Uh, but uh, from there, the Landorus goes for the Earth Power, knocks out the Mammoth Swine, and we find out it is a Life Orb set Landorus. So really nice to know that it's not Scarfed, as uh, the next turn Squid actually goes in uh, and actually uh, sends in his Scarfed Golbat, and uh, uh, probably freaks out 
uh, Arthur and gets the knockout with Brave Bird and Charlemagne, you dick, you knocked out a coughing. Why'd you have to crit? That was our encounter. Uh, so after the Landris goes down, Latias comes in. Golbat swaps out for Heracross as Latias goes for the Thunderbolt. Gets the paralysis on it, but uh, Squid, I think, was uh, using it more as a sacrificial roll to get a safe swap in. And he just lets the Heracross die to Thunderbolt from uh, Latias next turn. As if I recall correctly, this Latias was actually choice specs. But from there, the next turn, uh, Gardevoir comes in, and Squid did a really nice job with this set. Uh, as it is a choice specs, uh, as it's a choice specs uh, Gardevoir as well, with enough. He like did something really weird to where he uh, was able to add a little bit of a special defensive investment, which uh, Gardevoir actually has. He probably didn't go max speed. He only needed yeah. enough speed to outspeed certain things. Yeah, and so because of that, you know, uh, that extra special defensive uh, stats really uh, helped Squid in the long run as uh, Latias goes and swaps out for the Crobat. Squid just goes ahead and knocks, locks himself into Moonblast. That stab specs uh, Moonblast from a Gardevoir is hitting so hard after Rock's damage, of course. Uh, Crobat's down to 25%. The Moonblast picks up the knockout. Uh, so next turn, uh, Pukumuku comes in. Uh, against Gardevoir, goes for the Moonblast, knocks the Pukumuku down to about 33% health as the Pukumuku then turns around and goes for the Light Screen, uh, wanting to protect it from any special attacks. Uh, Squid's like, you know what, this is a roll, we got this. He goes for the Moonblast again. Uh, the Moonblast leaves the Pukumuku with the slightest sliver of health and the Pukumuku actually goes for the Baton Pass and Baton Passes out into the Latias. Now, it is Latias versus... Um, Gardevoir, both of them are choice specs, so they need to play, uh, at least Arthur needs to be careful as far as the move that he clicks himself into. He decides to lock himself into Thunderbolt. It does a crazy amount of damage to the Gardevoir, but because Gardevoir has just that extra bulk on the special side of things, it tanks that hit, it knocks out the... Latias with one moon blast and Pukumuku comes in and dies to rocks given mammal swine the kill there and squid Walks away. I believe with a 4-0 victory Rio. a 3-0 victory. Thank you against Arthur Which is which was a crazy battle for sure like seriously guys if you Want to find this battle go to the lazy ghost or the blazing squid on YouTube I am telling you guys that battle is insane that battle is insane and it's 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 a fun battle to watch for sure. And now we now we move to the final battle for this week, Matt. All right, so wrapping up the final battle of the week is Kelvin uh, against newcomer Kenneth, who is taking over Miguel's team. Uh, I don't know uh, if he has a team name yet, but we're uh, technically still calling the team Tropic Serena. So Kenneth was bringing this week. He brought Mimikyu, Silvalli. Serena, Rotom Wash, uh, Mega Charizard X, and Togekiss. And Kelvin brought Nihiligo, Jolteon, Bisharp, Delphox, Mew, and Salamence. And so uh, Kelvin leaves Nihiligo, and uh, Kenneth uh, leaves Mimikyu. Uh, Nihiligo just goes for Rocks turn one. A um, little surprised, because uh, Mimikyu could have done big damage, because Nihiligo's only got about 47 base defense. Um, I'm sure he just wanted to preserve the disguise. Um, goes into Sil Valley. Um, at this point, Kelvin switches into Jolteon. Well, Sil Valley goes for Explosion. <laughs> Stab Explosion from from a Pokemon with like 95 base attack. It's gonna do a bunch. It's kind of um, hurt. Jolteon's gone. That's it, not even a chance. It's nah. it's gone. It's a um, Jolteon. So, Come on now. So Delphox comes in. Uh, Serena comes in for uh, for Kenneth. Delphox sets up the substitute, but Serena goes for U-turn and uh, outs and uh, breaks the sub. Switches out into Rotom, um, where Kelvin switches into Mew to take the Hydro Pump. Goes for the Earthquake. Um, I'm not sure what he was what he was thinking. If he forgot about Levitate or if he was expecting a switch, but there's nothing else really that like half of Kenneth's team is immune to ground. Um, but anyway, it's immune to the Earthquake, gets a Reflect up. Uh, next turn he Volt switches into Charizard X when uh, Mew Thunder Punches, which 
Or no, uh, he village switches into Charizard on the, uh... I forget what Mew did, but it, uh, it Ooh, was not something damaging. It was not something damaging, it must have been, uh... I think it was his own screen of some sort. Um, but anyway, um... It might have been Roost, I forget. Uh, Mew goes for Thunder Punch after Charizard comes in, goes down to half from rocks. But Charizard Mega Evolves, which... You know he has Mega Charizard X. You, mm -hmm. Thunder Punch isn't going to do anything to him. You had Earthquake. I'm, I'm not sure why. He, uh, Speaking he of Charizard, shit. Uh, so Charizard gets to sort of roost off at this point. It gets to basically ha full already um, because of the uh, Thunder Punch doing very little. Mew goes for an Earthquake. Does like 23, 26% maybe. Um, Charizard gets a Dragon Claw, which is bad. Uh, bad for Kelvin. The but Dragon he... Claw? A, dra a Dragon Dance. A Dragon Dance. Okay. Um, he goes for Dragon Claw the following turn. Kelvin plays it cool, though. Switches into Salamence, which wasn't Intimidate, so I guess he was running some sort of Moxie set. Um, sacks it, which sucks, because cause Salamence does work. But um, uh, he has two fairies... Kenneth brought two fairies, so it was a good call on something to sack. Um, Nihiligo comes in with the free switch. Uh, Charizard outspeeds because of the Dragon Dance. Dragon Claws, but Nihiligo has the Sash. And at this point is when the battle starts to turn more in Kelvin's favor. He gets the kill with Power Gem. Um, Mimikyu comes in. The Shadow Sneak's coming. He knows it. Goes into Bisharp to take it. Um, a bit of mind games here with, uh, with like sucker punches and, and knockoffs and Mimikyu goes for a swords dance at one point. Eventually gets the play rough kill on Bisharp, but uh, it's uh, in the red. Uh, in the red or the low yellow and it's not doing well. Uh, the disguise is broken. Um, Mew comes in and Mew is sitting just under half, I believe. And, uh, and Mew... <laughs> Probably not going to take something from plus two, uh, from plus two Mimikyu. And Shadow Claw goes off. Crits, I don't know if it mattered, but Mew's down. It's gone. Um, at this point, Delphox comes in, and I forget. I don't know if it had taken much damage or any at all, but uh, a plus two Shadow Sneak from Mimikyu, I believe he was Life Orb as well. Uh, would have done a lot of damage, if not KO'd this thing. But Kenneth went for an attack, oh, I'm not going for the priority, and Delphox just kills it with Flamethrower. God damn. Um, so yeah, I don't know with that one. Um, Rotom, Heat Rotom Wash comes in. Um, Delphox goes for a Psychic to just get the chip damage, puts it in the yellow, uh, dies to a Hydro Pump. And at this point, Nihiligo comes in, and Rotom's sitting between 30 and 40%, I want to say. Um, Nihiligo goes for the Sludge Wave, that big, like, 100 and something base uh, special attack. Where is it? 127 base special attack. Gets the kill on, on Rotom. Might have been a more uh, defensive set, I'm not sure. But uh, at that point, the beast boost, it's plus one special attack. Um, it's max speed. Um, Kenneth only has Serena and Togekiss left both of which get outsped and hit super effective by Sludge Wave, and Kelvin cleans up with Nihiligo picking up five or four kills, and uh, and Delphox picking up the other one, and wins with the close 1-0. Came back from down 3-1, and uh, I just want to say, Kelvin, that was a uh, great <laughs> battle on your part. Kenneth did pretty well, too. He almost had that one. He uh, almost had it. He, he was super he was close. Basically, one HP. Uh, Nihiligo had one HP. That battle came down to the wire. Literally to one HP. Um, I'm thinking the kill on Rotom was a roll, too. Uh, I'm not 100% sure uh, exactly what spread Rotom was and if Nihiligo was timid or modest. But um, it, it was a very close battle, guys. Well done. Uh and that was the shortest battle of the week, 19 turns. Yeah, like, these were some really quick battles. There weren't, like, 60, um... Thank the light. Thank the gods. Uh, but, 
uh, let's go ahead and go over uh, next week's battles. I'm going to go ahead and uh, click out of the game. So, so, so you guys won't be hearing any background music. I'm sorry. Or you will, maybe. <laughs> maybe not. Anyway. So for next week, for week nine coming up, we have Kelvin and the Tokyo Tops versus Arthur and the Phoenix Sun Floras. You then have, uh, let's see, Marco and the Venice Vespa Queen versus Isaac and the Seattle Onyx. We then have Mark and the Arizona Vocal Ronas versus Kenneth and Team Name to be Determined. We'll just say um, Team Sir, Kenneth. T Team Kenneth. Then we have Matt. We have an Myself, interesting game. Yeah. You, the Winnipeg Jellicent uh, are. This, this could be a big, big battle. The Winnipeg Jellison are going to be facing off against the Toronto Totodiles and Coach Squid. How do you feel yeah, about that? I, I am nervous, but I am also incredibly excited because if I pick up the win here, um, I have two more battles left, which if I can win at least one of, I pretty much have playoffs locked. Oh, I, hate um, I hate it when you say that. Mark's got to uh, lose. I got to figure out the thing with Mark because Mark is ahead of me right now, and Mark needs to lose a couple. Like I think Mark needs to lose one more time, and I need to win the rest of my battles. Basically, if Mark loses one more game, or I win one more game, uh, I'm pretty much guaranteed to make playoffs. Yo, let's beat Mark together. I I want to make playoffs. Oh, I guess you <laughs> could you could catch me too. Technically, if I lost every game, if I lost three games and you won three games, you'd be ahead of me. So I need to win. Yeah, but at that point we'd we'd, not, we'd knock Mark basis. out. Yes. <laughs> but uh, Steven is still in the runnings too, one ahead of Mark. Yeah, Steven uh, is still in the running. We have the Ark Kentucky uh Archaeops facing off against Jesse. Aerodactyl, I believe. He changed it. Oh, did he finally change it to the Aerodactyls? Well, it's been it's been the Aerodactyls since uh it's like just, last season. Really? It says Archaeops on my thing. Well, one of the one of the places it's wrong, and someone entered it wrong. It's it's Aerodactyl's on it. The only time it was Archaeops was this first season he was in. But anyway, and a versus is versing off against Jesse and the Australian Aquanines, and then finally you have yours truly, your coach of the Salt Lake City Swamperts versus Drew and the Nottinghamshire Venusaurs. That's his name, right? He keeps changing yeah. it. He's changed it once. Such a long convoluted name. Or is it? Or is, it, or is he still the? Or is he? Or no, is, no, no. It's it's Venusaur. It's yeah. Because before it was like it before it was freaking um the Nottingham actually the uh, the Nottingham Noctowls. Drewfin Dolphins. Uh, if you ask him, that's his team name. Uh, uh, <laughs> you should definitely uh, message him and ask him why it's that. Totally. If you're in the group, definitely do that. But yeah, a lot of fun uh, battles. One of them has already happened. I know for sure. <coughs> Mine. So, uh, so yeah, it's just it's, it looks like it's gonna be a fun uh, group of battles. I want to thank you guys so much for watching uh, this little stream. Like I said, if you guys are interested in finding out who TLTPG is, um, you know, definitely just face just Google, go to Google, uh, type in TLTPG. Our page is there. Uh, tell us that you tell us that you found us through the Twitch. And, yeah, there's nothing really much more I have to say. Matt, do you have anything to say? Just uh, best of luck to everybody uh, making the push for playoffs. And uh, if you're out of the runnings, don't give up. Just uh, try and finish strong and uh, make a good uh, impression for next season. Absolutely. Absolutely, because there will definitely be a next season with tears this time. I'm guaranteeing that Spoilers. right now. Spoilers. But yeah, uh, once again, you guys, thank you so much for watching. We're going to get up out of here. It's extremely late, of course. Uh, I always love how we start filming these around midnight just across the U.S. <laughs> or later. Or later, absolutely, <laughs> yeah. But like I said, we're going to get up out of here. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we will catch you in the next stream. See ya.